we have two infinite conducting plates and a charge q is located between the plates at a certain distance x from one plate so the other distance is l minus x we need to find the charges induced on each of the plates so imagine charge q is being placed here and obviously some negative charge will be induced on this plate let's call it q1 and some negative charge q2 is induced on this plate now let's break this charge into two smaller charges let's say q by 2 and q by 2 so now just think that charge induced on this plate because of that q by 2 should be q1 by 2 and because of other q by 2 it should be an again q1 by 2 so the net charge induced if i just break it into two small small charges is still going to be same because both the charges are still at the same distance from the plate so again we have the whole charge here and because of that charge q1 is induced if i just see it as two small charges which are at the same distance x then the same charge q1 will be induced and here on the other plate also same total charge q2 will be induced now if i break it into four charges and again we'll keep it at the same distance x charge q1 is going to be same q2 is going to be same now we are going to take it further apart and put it entirely on a plane so i'm breaking this into infinitely small pieces and every piece is at a distance x so still charge induced are going to be same q1 and q2 so this simplifies our problem because now we can treat these as three plates see we are not talking about how these charges are interacting among themselves that is different in each case we are only talking about the interaction between the charge q and the plates and here also we are not talking about the charge distribution on these plates that is obviously different in all the cases we are talking about total charge so total charge depends only on how far this distance how far this charge q is placed and in all the cases the charge q is placed at the same distance x so q1 in all the cases is same so now let's treat them these are the two conducting plates and because are they are infinitely long let's say they are grounded let's take a big chunk of these plates of area a so we have distributed this charge q on a big plate of let's say area a and we are taking similar area a plates of the the first plate and the second plate as well so let me write also so considering the charge spread over large area a so now we know how to solve these three plate charge distribution problems so let's say this is q1 so because of the shielding effects we won't have any charge here and this side of the plate will be minus q1 this side will be q plus q1 conservation of charge total charge needs to be q and on this side of the plate it will be minus of q plus q1 so we have conserved the charge and we have taken care of the variables in that second equation we'll write for the potential so we'll go from 1 to 2 and we can see that potential of 1 is same as potential of 2 so we'll get our equation from that so going from 1 to 2 potential varies as v1 plus q1 by a epsilon times x so q1 by a is sigma 1 so field between these two plates is sigma 1 by epsilon that's what we are writing q1 x by a epsilon plus between these two potential differences q plus q1 up by a epsilon into l minus x is equal to v2 and as v1 is equal to v2 we'll cancel that and we'll be left with our equation q1 x plus q plus q1 into l minus x is equal to zero now you can see there is only one variable q1 in this equation so we'll find that that will give the charge on the first plate q1 and charge on the second plate will be negative of q plus q1 so you put the value of q1 here you will get q2 as well 
So we distributed again, just to recap, we distributed this charge into a large area and total charge induced remain the same. Then in the plates, we considered large area A again because then only we can talk about uniform electric field inside and because A cancels out, it won't matter. So we just resolved this and got our answer and in this, we have already taken care of conservation of charge. So we did not write the equation separately here. So with just this equation, we got our answer.